have a look at the first one. Now, I've deliberately chosen one where, um, if you have a look, again, if you just mentally do your discriminant, right? Uh, B squared is 4, minus 4AC will be minus 20. So you're getting a negative discriminant here, okay? So the whole point is, like, you can't actually... Like, these roots, they don't exist in the real number system, okay? So I can't find them and then add them or find them and then multiply them, right? Um, you can actually try to cheat the rules and do that, but um, it's much more efficient just to use these methods, okay? So to begin with, for this example, let's just simply say, what's the sum of roots in this case? Alpha plus beta is minus B on A, which is minus two on one. So it's just negative two. Yeah, happy with that? The sum of the roots, I'm going to stop calling it the product of the roots, even though that's what it is. More generally speaking, it's the sum of the roots two at a time, is C on A, right? Five over one. It's just five. Okay, you happy with that? So, there's alpha beta, there's alpha beta. Now, to get to this next one, okay, there are two categories of these, and I've got both of them on the board. The first thing is, like, well, I don't know what alpha is two is, because I don't know what alpha is, right? But if I deal with this guy as a whole, it's a bit like solving a Sudoku, right? If you just focus on one particular square, you're like, I don't know. But if you look at the squares around it, it gives you a clue, right? So I'm going to take it as a whole. I'm just going to expand the thing, right? If I expand, I get this. Do you agree with that? Like, that's just taking the terms, doing the binomials, right? So once I've got that, though, I can see that this guy is composed of these two, right, in some combination. Um, there's the sum two at a time, there's double, the sum one at a time, and then there's just a four hanging out the end because, because why not, okay? So therefore, every one of these kinds of questions here, so if you have to look at part three here, part four and five here, right? They always use these guys as the building blocks. That's all you've got to work with, right? But that's all you need. You can combine them in an incredible amount of ways, right? So if you have a look at this, I know what alpha beta is. It's five. I know what alpha plus beta is, it's negative 2. And then I've just got a 4 hanging out on the end, so that looks to me like it's equal to 5. Okay? Does that make sense? Not too complicated, is it? Okay. Um, now, you can see the way I combine these. When I go to cubics, because there are more pieces, it does get a little bit more difficult. But, if you logic it out, it's still just as, you know, it's just as easy to work with. So uh, let's firstly just read off the initial results, right? So the sum one at a time is, have a look. Minus B on A. It's minus B on A, which is minus negative one on two, which is one on two. So alpha plus beta plus gamma is a half, okay? The sum two at a time oops, is um, C on A, which is just 2. That's nice. And then the last <coughs> one, the sum 3 at a time, alpha, beta, gamma, is minus, minus, minus 3 on, on, on 2. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you okay with that? Minus B on A, C on A, minus D on A. Okay, great. Now when you have a look at these guys, okay, this one is not too hard. I'm going to take the same approach that I did here, right? If I put them all together, consider them as a whole, I will see these building blocks emerge, okay? So you have a look at this and you say, well, I've got three fractions. The natural thing to do is, I'm going to, get a, I'm going to multiply to get a common denominator, so then I can just add them together, yeah? So for example, the common denominator here being that I have an alpha and a beta and a gamma, the common denominator clearly has to be alpha, beta, gamma. Right? So it's going to be alpha beta on alpha beta gamma plus on alpha beta gamma plus on alpha beta gamma. Now, what do I have to multiply each of those fractions by to get a denominator of alpha beta gamma? Look at the first one. I've got to multiply that guy by beta gamma because I've, I've just got one there, right? And I multiply by that on the denominator. In the same way, I'm going to have to multiply this one by alpha gamma and the last one by alpha beta. Now, you don't need to go much further to see, when you add these all together, you have the sum, two at a time, as the numerator, right? Do you see that? And as a denominator, you have three. this guy, the minus three on two. Yep. So just tidying up just a teeny bit, it looks like that's minus four on three to me. Are you happy with that? Did I do it right? The two comes up the top? 
Okay, now just this last one is ever so slightly different, but the approach will be much the same, okay? When you have a look at this, the way this differs to this question and this question is the ones I just circled in red, they have an obvious way that you just do the next step, right? It's like, oh, I expand, that's obvious. Oh, I just add them, that's okay, right? But here, like that, that's as simple as it gets. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? So you kind of have to reverse engineer it a little bit, right? You have to think about where could I have started from that could possibly lead here, okay? Now, let me give you a suggestion. If I start from either of these guys, right? Do you see that for either of these, the alphas, betas, and gammas are already intertwined? Right? They're already sort of linked together, okay? So if I were to square either of these, I would get alpha squared beta squareds and beta squared gamma squareds and or an alpha beta an alpha squared beta squared gamma squared. They're all mixed up, right? So whichever way you combine them, in order to square, they'll all be kind of connected and tangled up. And that's not very helpful. So therefore, I look at this guy. This is the only one which has the three separated out the way they are here. I'm going to take this guy and I'll square him. I have to square somewhere, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. Okay, I'm going to take alpha plus beta plus gamma because I know what that value is, right? And I'm just going to square the lot. Are you okay with that? So that's alpha plus beta plus gamma times alpha plus beta plus gamma. So when I do that, I get alpha squared plus alpha beta plus alpha gamma. You see that? That's the first expansion. Put it in brackets. I'll do the second one, which will give me alpha beta plus beta squared plus beta gamma. You see I multiply everything by beta. And then my last one, which will be alpha, tell me, gamma plus beta gamma plus gamma squared. Excellent. So I've done the brackets there just so I don't get overwhelmed by how many terms I've got so I can see if there's a pattern. It's three threes, right? And then you can see I've got the alpha squared, beta squared, gamma squared that I wanted out separate. There's just extra stuff flying around. Right? So let's separate out the stuff that I want, namely these guys, right? And what extra stuff is there? Two, two alpha beta. Good. Two There's the spread. two alpha betas here and here. There's going to be two um, alpha gammas um, here and here. And I, I don't need to continue the pattern, right? In fact, you always get this kind of symmetry. So double up and double up and the last one. So you can see I've got two times the sum of the roots two at a time. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go two lots of. Okay. So now, being that I started with this thing all squared, and what I really want is that guy. Right, you see that? I just bring this guy over the other side, and then I have him by himself. You see that? So therefore, alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared is alpha plus beta plus gamma all squared. Uh, what was it? A half all squared, so that's going to be a quarter. Plus double the sum two at a time. Minus. Oh, sorry, minus, of course. I'm taking it over the other side. So two times two, which is four. Yeah, is that what I got? Yep. Okay. So that's uh, minus three and three quarters. Ta-da! Okay, so you see how I kind of did it in reverse, right? Because I, I didn't have an obvious simplification step from here, okay? But I ended up with the same kind of like, I, I'm just trying to work out what the building blocks are. And then once you know what they are, you just evaluate them. 